Oops. All right. So thank you so much for watching us once again. Um, actually, this is my first episode for a show entitled Crazy Talks. But because you know why? The people that I'm going to be interviewing in this show are crazy. Well, called crazy by the society because they are, I think, akin to genius. They are a little bit, not only a little bit, but they are really courageous in coming out to the open with what and how they believe in, and they're not afraid. Well, it is proper for a host, not a host, but this is just a conversation, actually. But, you know, I'm hosting, so let me, you know, just let it be that way. I should not forget to interview my conversation partner for today. Well, is a TEDx speaker. Well, only a TEDx speaker. He's only a book author. He's only a, um, a mentor and more, more of that. Well, he can talk more about himself and please listen to him. He's crazy, close to genius. Oh, Sarah. thank you so much. There's an arrow line yeah, between crazy and genius. I agree with that. I don't know which one I am, but I think it changes on the day. But thank you so much for the invitation, Angela, and great to be here. Uh, yes, my name is Tero Mollis. I'm originally from Finland, but uh, currently I'm living for the past 20 years in Mexico and all over the world. Uh, I, think, uh, I think strongly that we are all from this little planet of ours and we should have no no frontiers or or borders or nation nations so we are all one we're citizens planet. of the world right we're all citizens of the world all right roll on please go ahead yes and yes yeah, so so i do many things I, I i have found out in life a very long time ago that doing only one thing is is boring so so i try to do as many things as i possibly can and tr especially try things try new things you know at least if nothing else you learn that you don't like that thing which is very valuable per se and and you know i do a lot of things uh, from as you mentioned wrote a book uh, i do i'm a part-time actor i run a couple of businesses i i i design board games here are a couple of them on i proudly display on my on my office and uh, i do all kinds of stuff but uh, I think life is more curious and entertaining when you are involved in as many as possible things. Yeah, I think the key word is dynamism. How do you keep yourself dynamic? You're a father, uh, you're a career person. How do you keep yourself dynamic in spite of all these um, activities and responsibilities? Uh, I think the, the answer is curiosity. I'm, I'm always curious about what would happen if this would happen or what would ha what would I feel if I tried this or, you know, what, what could it be like if I, you know, you know, tried something. So I think curiosity is the, my driving force and, uh, and that uh, very, very much aligned with creativity. So creativity is often a misunderstood word in my opinion that, you know, it's limited to certain things, but you know, saying a phrase or, you know, doing anything, you know, making up a little play with your kids to entertain them, that is creativity and everything can be, uh, you know, categorized as such. And it's a th good thing. It's not a bad thing. You know, it, it doesn't lessen from the amazing creativity that, you know, we, we so often limit ourselves to feeling that that is creativity of Steve Jobs or, you know, Gandhi or... Yeah, Nelson yeah, Mandela, yeah. you know, it's, we should not limit ourselves. So, so I think creativity matched with curiosity, you are on the roll. Great. Well, today is um, the first day of the Women's Day celebration. So how are you, yeah, how do you deal with your wife creatively? Uh, well, my ex-wife, there you go, to, to clarify that, but we are great friends and uh, it was a very amicable separation. We talked about it for years and then mm -hmm. make a decision about it. But I, I as, as a white privileged male, I, my, my biggest responsibility is to create awareness, to talk to other men. So my role, I have taken that role from since many years ago, and this is not just some BS that I, I claim to do, but you know, you can track my social networks you can look me up on linkedin and you can see that every i don't know third fourth fifth post is about you know equal pay or you know 
gender equality or things that are close to my heart. And I think uh, my role as a man is to speak up and, and I don't want to speak over anybody. I want to amplify the voice of the women that are brave enough to really bring it forward and especially be the voice in those closed male groups where often chauvinism and other themes come, come up very, very often. So it is my responsibility to raise a hand and say, guys, hey, listen, let's, you know, let's become better. Let's change the narrative. Let's not do that same old thing always. And I think that is something we men all can and should do from within our circles of power or whatever. But uh, that is the least we can do. And we all should do that. But unfortunately and amazingly, we are very few yet, but we are more every day. Thank you so much. And I, I'm so happy that uh, there's someone in our camp. <laughs> All right, there's someone in our camp and I think your voice will count. And uh, so, most likely your good. circle will listen to you. Now, going yeah. back to your book, your book is entitled Sand Castle. Life, uh, life what is, is it all castle. about? Life is a Sand Castle. My book is about uh, looking at life as from a perspective of, of from a perspective of, of it being a sand, like a sand castle. This means that, you know, uh, why would you, why should you waste or spend time, energy, love in building and creating something today? It can be a sandcastle or your life, even when you know that tomorrow it will be gone. Meaning that, you know, a sandcastle will be taken away by the tide or some careless passing humans or whatnot. Uh, and your life can be taken away just as easily. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and really the point of, if not being, you know, I'm not trying to be fat, fatalistic or, you know, you know mm -hmm. you're going to die tomorrow. But the mm -hmm. fact is that you will die one day. Yes. And understanding that if, if it's one day away or 57 years away, it doesn't make any difference. Just make sure you spend your time well and be happy. Yeah, I think what you wanted to say is that make your life not only relevant, but significant while you're on earth. Yes, well, significant for you, and that is, I think, that is a common and another. Sorry, Angel, I'm going to counter and say everything, but uh, uh, but I, I think uh, in my book I, I explain this that in my my personal view, we have no purpose in life. I think I have found happiness through realizing that I am absolutely insignificant, that I have no major mission, my existence is just a cosmic accident, and realizing that and truly understanding it actually empowers you to live in the moment understand that your life is fle life is fleeting and it's right now and and it's it helps you avoid spending time on stupid stuff or hanging with stupid people or doing stupid stuff <laughs> and it really liberates you to be you know doing those things that make you happy okay <coughs> and, it's, and it's a personal choice you know again i i always mention this is you know, people want to define success or other words like that, you know, happiness, even happiness. Uh, make sure that the parameters you use are your own, fully your own. You cannot, you should not compare yourself to other people because Perfect. their parameters mm -hmm. and their circumstances are absolutely different. Absolutely different. Yes, yes we are. Correct. We are. My favorite paradox is, you know, mm -hmm. never forget you're unique, just mm -hmm. like everybody else. Perfect. Well, I, I, I would like you to elaborate more on cosmic accident because this really conflicts with some of, or if not most, of our viewers' uh, belief or faith. Um, well, I'm sure you know that living in Mexico, you should be aware of this. So what do you mean by cosmic accident? I mean, I, I, I base this on, on the fact that I've always loved, uh, you know, astrophysics and, you know, astronomy. I've always been interested in, in what's out there, what else is, you know, going on and not just focus on our little little globe and, you know, what's going around here. Uh, and, and I think the more you understand about the massive scale of things and the, the really the amazingly chaotic uh, but perfectly harmonious universe that we live in that we don't understand at all. We really don't have any understanding of what, what is beyond there and what's going on. Uh, I think that, that puts you in a position to realize that, you know, it's really quite meaningless what I as one person 
do in my very narrow, approximately 75 years of lifespan. Uh, on the cosmic scale, cosmic scale, it's ridiculous. I mean, the planet is over 4 billion years old and the universe, who knows, you know, and maybe the string theory is right and this is just one phase of the next one. And it's, you know, nobody knows, but even more so because of the just a simple massive scale, the fact that I exist right now, it cannot be anything but a cosmic happenstance. You know, it's just a, a quirky, funny thing that I just happen to pop up and be born and exist. And uh, uh, and and again, I repeat, this is my personal opinion. Yes, I don't yes. want to provoke or obligate right, anybody right. to believe like I do. And uh. this, you know, and, and I think that is a common mistake as well. That you know, if you believe in something. Make sure first that it is something you define yourself and not something that was uh, forced upon you when you were a kid and had no choice or understanding. And that's how many religions of the world work is that you were never given a choice. You were just brought up to it. And that is the way it is. And, you know, and so then it's just a luck if you were born this side of the globe or this side of the globe, that's who you become. And, and I always ask people to question everything, dare to question everything. And unlearn not only learn new things but you have to unlearn first to be able to learn new things so let go of the notion that you have to support this football club for the rest of your life or you this is your favorite thing this is your favorite color because somebody said so or you thought so as a kid it doesn't make you any less valuable or trustworthy if you change your opinion every day so it, 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 i find it so funny that we are allowed to change our opinion of the favorite brand of ketchup at any moment. Nobody questions that. But then, oh, I changed my God or I've changed my, you know, the national team. I, I support the other country now. It's like, oh, you're nobody. You are a horrible person. I find it crazy. Uh, living in Mexico with a very conservative society, how do you live your life with that kind oh, of mentality? Very, very much bunkered alone. No, but... No, I'm kidding. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, there's there's people who have an open mind everywhere, even, even in more conservative cultures. And it's the key is to sort of finding those people at first and, you know, interacting with them to start with. And then little by little, as your social circle expands, you know, treading slowly into their world. Uh, I mean, you will run into walls and I, I often do, but, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm not here to change their opinions. I'm only here to hopefully plant an idea in their head that might grow. You know, it's, it's like, I'm just offering alternatives to, to thought. You know, you believe in this thing and you believe it fervently and it gives you peace of mind or it doesn't, but that's not my issue. My issue is my issue. And I can only share knowledge and, you know, listen to you and you can share yours, but often talking with uh, fanatical people or people who have very strong beliefs in a thing, they will not listen to other opinions. And that is a huge mistake because, you know, they usually don't dare. I mean, in most cases that people I have found in life that have changed their mind about something big is that they admit later that they were afraid that they might change their mind, which they did eventually and they were happy about it. But, you know, we humans tend to be afraid of change uh, we have all these biases and we have all these fallacies and things we cling to and, and you know, letting go of them is a, is a brave thing. And I applaud anybody who can do. Perfect. Perfectly said. So I'm not going to add anything to that. I would just like also to ask you about not, you know, I, I always believe that you're a product of your environment. So when you said like not hanging around with stupid people, what kind of people do you consider stupid? <laughs> uh, I know I'm digging my own hole here, but no, it's, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a phrase and it's, of course, I mean, everybody is. No, you're not digging a hole. Actually, you're, you're not digging a hole. Actually, I would just like you to emphasize on that because. Um, no, I, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, everybody is wise to somebody and everybody's stupid to somebody. It depends mm. on the point of view. Again, uh, for me, uh, a stupid person is somebody who is, as mentioned, unwilling to listen unwilling to unlearn and learn new things, or at least question what they think is true. And that to me is, I mean, uh, I think the 
biggest uh, compliment anybody can be given is that they are capable of thought. And I'm not saying that, oh, I thought one plus one is two, and I thought that I like dogs. No, really processing things that, you know, you know, you can say that I believe such thing, but then ask, why do you believe such thing? And wh where does that belief come from, really? And the funny thing is that you will have the answers. You have all the answers because you know yourself. You will most likely don't know anybody else in your whole world, but you can learn to know yourself. And that is, uh, that's a road to take because very few of us know ourselves really. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I think what you wanted to say was, you know, people should listen to all philosophies and uh, all ideas and at the same time sit down and practice critical and analytical thinking and try to adapt. Yeah. Those things exactly. that are that, yeah that that they think would suit them and make them better persons. I yes, think that's what absolutely. you wanted to say. Absolutely, yeah. Take take the best of everything. And the people, I mean, I always right, use this right. example. Right. I have lived in many many countries in the world. I've been lucky. So, uh, and people always ask me, "What is your favorite country?" And mm -hmm. I say, "It is the more you travel, the less possible it is to answer that question." Because mm -hmm. every place has its good things and its bad things and everything in between. Not to be a binary thinker, but you know, there's so many scales and every person has the same scales and every experience has the same scales. So you, as, more, as you advance in life and you think more, you understand that the scales are so ambiguous and large that the only way to maintain sane in this crazy world is to make sure you are standing on your path that you created and that makes you happy. Nothing else is in, the, in your control. Okay, I like what you said, that you create your own path. Your, your, your path is your own accountability, your own responsibility. It's, it's not the responsibility of anyone else, not even someone else out in the universe. It is no. you who create your own path. I'd like you to... Um, elucidate on that some more i think that's yeah, very important I, mean, I, I think i think taking responsibility for your own life uh, it sounds like a, such a cliche and people use it a lot but they don't really do it i mean it, it it's not only you know you're aware of i mean if i jump off the cliff i will die okay i'm responsible but i mean why not focus on things like you know being well and being happy and being content and being peaceful and being whatever you might find important to you uh, ask yourself and answer honestly what are the things that make you tick make you, you know make you work and make your brain work in the way that provides you such a good life and then follow those things and do them and they will have a price as you know they will have cost you know you will probably lose some friends along the way and you know, maybe your uncle will now hate you because you're against his, his beliefs or something. But that is the price you will have to pay. And I've, I've always said, and I've, I'm, I'm an example of this, that uh, when you find yourself and when you truly get to know yourself, it's a lonely life. But it's a fantastic life because you also learn to love being with yourself uh, along the way. So you don't really, I mean, you, of course we need people and we are social animals, but you learn to be by yourself. And by that same definition, you become a better companion. You become better friend. You become so much better partner to somebody who also wants to, you know, be with somebody, but respect your independence and your, you know, your, your space. And I think it works. It works so well for me. And I hope, and I'm sure it would work for many more people if they dare to let go of those beliefs, unlearn things, learn new things, and learn to know themselves. I think that is the key. Absolutely. Learning to know themselves and love themselves and accept themselves and defining their parameters and defining the rules in life and defining what they want in life. I think yes. that's what makes well life really more fulfilled. Absolutely. Um, Yes. The parameters is key. You know, if you're if you think that your life will be happy when you have a huge house and a Rolls Royce and a Learjet, you know, make sure you check those thoughts. Make sure you question them and understand is that really true? Because I'm sure mm -hmm. that it's not. 
because I've, I've tried that channel when I was in my 20s and I went through, I don't know, I want to get all those things and I got them and I realized it didn't change anything. And when I went to the other extreme where I didn't have any of those things or, you know, it didn't matter anything. I, it, it was always me. It was all, it always came back to me. And, and this is a fantastic saying as well that never forget that the only common denominator in all your failed relationships is you. Yes, taking accountability. Yeah, it's only you because you attract who you are. <laughs> exactly. yes. Very true. You attract who you are, so you can't blame your partner for being this and that. There you because go. Love attraction. Love there you attraction. Go. The you the attract who you here. are. The and it takes two to tango. It takes two to tango. At least two, absolutely. <laughs> yes, it takes two to tango. Well, you can tango alone. <laughs> You can, and, and it's great fun. Who cares? There is no rules in life. Make oh, yeah, sure these crazy talks, rules. right? You can tango alone. Well, I tangoed alone with myself for 16 years. And it, I was happy. I was contented. And I was okay. Yes. I, was, I was okay. There is no I, rules. I mean, I was okay. You, know. you can tango with yourself. Actually, the bottom line is contentment. The bottom line is contentment. You can be content with a partner without a partner. Yes. And as you, you will be content if you define your own parameters of success. That's Correct. the key. That's Ooh. the key thing. If you if you compare to the TikTok influencer or this <laughs> popular friend of yours, you will always right. be miserable because you mm -hmm. will never get that same status because it's impossible. They are they and you are you. Correct. Stop, stop yes. chasing other yes. people's dreams, chase your own, yes. And, and and stop pleasing people. You know, this one makes person miserable, like not living the life she or he ought to live because he or she needs to please a lot of people. I really don't like that. That's why we came up with TVC and TV because we're sick and tired of, you know, these mass media shows where we where we we need to go by the script. We need to be very perfect when when in fact life isn't perfect, and uh, you know misrepresent everything for the sake of art. Well, art isn't perfect either. So we came up with TVC and TV, redefining mass media and no scripts, no editing. This will go online. This will be online. This will go anywhere. <laughs> what? what? This is unedited. What? What? Uh, I'm kidding. But this is fantastic. And I congratulate you. I think, uh, I think today's connected world, the digital world, I mean, many people complain about it. Many people love it. Uh, I think it can be overwhelming sometimes, but there are also ways to use it for good. There's mm -hmm. ways to use it for, you know, really getting the real information out there and, you know, not, not only focusing on the algorithms or fake news, but mm -hmm. it is everybody's responsibility to find stuff and to that works for them. So keep looking, keep unlearning, keep learning. Always. Yeah. Learning. All right. Yeah. yeah. Keep learning, keep unlearning and keep exercising your critical and analytical thinking. I think that is very important, especially with the highways of ideas bombarding us every day. Yes. yes. yes and yes. Okay, so tell us about your book. I, I'm sorry, I was really very, you know, up to my neck because of the Ukraine issue we wanted. And then uh, we are interviewing a lot of uh, TV hosts. I mean, you know, TV, TVC in TV hosts came in. So we need, needed to give them some orientations and training. And then, uh, oh, a lot of things. But of course, you know, you see, I'm wearing a polo shirt because this is very flexible at home. When, well, this is an office wear. Uh, well, I, I, I do have a little bit of this, okay? Well, you know, sometimes <laughs> I put, <laughs> you know, I just wear this. When I'm, <clears throat> I'm sorry, when I'm in the kitchen, I just put an apron over this. When I go out, you know, on an errand, it's winter here. I just, you know, put, um, wear a coat over it. Um, you know, this is very flexible. And I wear it all. I mean, I wear this because I work from home. I don't want to pretend like I have a studio and we have a script and everything is really glossy. I don't like that. That's pretension. That's hypocrisy. I. That's fake. <laughs> I want it real. I want it real. Yes. <laughs> I got it. I'm sitting here in my office as well, and you know, my office is the most important things in my life. You know, my children and my games. You know, pretty mm. much. And, empty space with a lot of room to you know just think and and be 
and adapt, you know, change tomorrow. I mean, I'll, you know, I, I actually cut my hair for, for you, Angela, and, you know, I, I wanted to look semi-decent, but uh, I mean, tomorrow I'll be in a t-shirt and her hair tossed all over and who cares? And, you know, oh, me too. I horrible, really... horrible mustache as an explanation. And I'll tell you about <laughs> it later. It's, it's not a free will here. <laughs> I really hadn't, oh yeah, I really hadn't combed my hair for maybe half a day. I had several meetings. Well, I combed my hair, uh, I think before the taping with Ella Fine, the new host for TVC and TV. Um, I had a meeting with a Korean guy. Um, I, yeah, I think, um, after I cooked lunch and after I ate with my partner, um, I combed my hair a bit to look presentable. And I do what I, well, yeah, I really comb my hair and uh, and uh, make sure that I look presentable when I eat with my partner. Because my principle is that why should I, uh, why should I try to look presentable outside of my home? You know, charity start at home. So if I'd like to look presentable outside of my home and you know, to other people, I have to make sure that I have to be presentable to my partner because he's my partner in life and he's special. That's, you know, for me showing him that he's, he is special. That's <laughs> that is, that is your, I mean, that is your choice. And again, it's a key, key point that whatever makes you feel happy, you know, you do it. I mean, not for the reasons others or the society or partners. Mm. If it makes feel you, you feel good, then do it. And then tomorrow, right. be, be open to question it. Don't, mm. don't just let it, don't just choose forever and roll with the ball for the rest of your life. Make sure you take the stops once in a while and question the things we do, because otherwise we get on autopilot and life is over quicker than we realize. So the change is the only thing that doesn't change. Yes. Everything really changes. So, yeah, look at our leadership now. They don't change. They've been trained by the tyrannical leaders during the Iron Age, maybe. And so they're still living under the tribal conquest, even until these days. They refuse to learn and they refuse to change. Yes, but I mean, the whole system is, is, is unwilling to change. I mean, capitalism or democracy uh, some more famous people have said wisely that it is not the best system available, but it's the best system we have come up with so far. So, you know, come up with a better system. Don't just complain. And, you know, things like political parties are totally obsolete. They were created for a good reason. Correct. A long time ago. but A not long time ago, yet. but not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Exactly. Most, most school systems were designed in 1875. And yes. have not been upgraded since then. You know, it's kind of like we need to also question the things we think that are functional and real and make our, you know, integrity. They're mostly just BS and crap and can be. BS, correct. Yes. The reason, yeah, exactly. The reason why we put up TVC and TV, Wealthopia Generation, that's another section, another department of TVC and TV. We invite people like you who've got new ideas just to challenge well you know not to proselytize but just to challenge the the youth and even the not 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 so young people to to think and um to see for themselves that you know like the world is changing everything is changing so as belief faith education um social systems should change and all these people i think in the government and i'm, I'm not sure i don't want to pinpoint names, but I think, you know, no matter how old they are, if they are into the seat of leadership, they need to up, upgrade themselves, update themselves, and to unlearn and relearn and, and re or, or unlearn and learn new things that the 21st century offers them. Because That's they're just cool. so anachronistic. I think they're just so anachronistic. And um, and that, I, yeah, people, we, people must remember that change is inevitable, except mm -hmm. from a vending machine, of course, but change is something that, you know, it, it's just going to happen. You cannot control it. So you might as well get on board. And, mm -hmm. and therefore, I always say, like, uh, the people who need to stop and question their surroundings and their life choices or their beliefs mostly are those who are not content with their surroundings. 
And the other group of people who must absolutely do this are those people who are content with their surroundings, because in both cases, something is wrong. So, you know, something is not, if you're totally content, that, that, is, that is status quo and it's, it's not human, it's not life. Life is always changing, always going Dynamic, that's what you know, say. Yeah, yes, yeah. finding a way. Life is mm -hmm. always finding a way and so mm -hmm. should you. So if you're content or uncontent, keep moving. The real peaceful place is when you are within the roller coaster of change. That is yes. the most All right. beautiful yes. place. Correct. Or, I, well, I think I should say what I believe in is not really a roller coaster of change, but that's, we, we change and we spiral upwards. Uh, <laughs> Every description is fine as long as it's your own and it works for you. So yes, absolutely. Keep going, you know, whatever it is, upwards, sideways, yeah, uh, but, diagonally, yeah. but make sure it's your own path and you are being true and honest to yourself. Yes. Through everybody else. Yes. You are first. If you're mm. not happy, nobody else around you will be can be happy either. At you cannot pour eyes. anything from an empty cup. You have there to you fill go. in yourself so that you'll be able to. Well, thank you very much. Well, I'm 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 sad to say that we only have five. I mean, no, three minutes more to go. So I give the floor to you. Um, I mean, maybe you can plug your book where they can buy I'd your book yes. and um, stuff like that. Yes, please. So thank you. First of all, thank you for inviting me. Can you can you me show can you show your book to us? Can uh, you show it? I can. Uh, I have to run to get it. It's somewhere far, but uh, <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it. All right. <laughs> okay. You see, folks, this is unscripted, and I think this is more fun. This is more fun. This is the Rather way to do it. it. Yeah. Sure. Show it to Good. us. So here it is. This is the book. <laughs> Life is a sandcastle. 205 pages. I recommend this book to everybody. It's very easy reading, but it'll give you a reason to question things. And I, I, I truly believe it's a, it's a, I wrote this book because I wanted to have conversations with more people. And I cannot unfortunately speak to everybody, but with a book, I might. So read it and let me have your thoughts. I really want to hear what it made you think, what it made you, you know, react. What was your gut feeling about it? And, uh, Hopefully, it will help you to switch those gears and change your perception. Buy the book. Buy, Buy the book. Life it's is a Sad Castle. On by, Amazon. On yeah, Amazon. Amazon by find it. Yes, Carol Molise, right? Okay. It's an and Amazon. Look, look me up on LinkedIn. I'd be happy to connect. Um, that's the platform I use mostly. So LinkedIn, Terra Molise. And uh, look for the book on Amazon. And happy to connect with everybody thank you so much for the invitation angela buy the book life is a sun castle by taro molly is m-o-l-l-i-i-s taro molly is and you'll be able to get to know and you will have the honor to speak with a tedx speaker it's my honor to be speaking with a tedx speaker i thought i'm not i thought i will not be able to make this show because you know, this guy here is a TEDx speaker, but thank oh, I got I got invited. I was able to do it. <laughs> I got invited to do a TEDx speak because I was honest and I spoke my mind always. And they said, "Hey, we like you for that." So being yourself opens doors. Be yourself. Dare to. I am myself. I've got no scripts, and thank God I made it. You see, I made it. Yeah, so I made it. So, folks. So no scripts. <laughs> in life, you might have some plans or so, but it's always good to live your life with spontaneity. Absolutely. And a smile. Thank you so and much, everybody. Smile. Thank you so much, Taro. My honor. My honor. Okay. Thank you for plugging your book too in our show. And I hope to be speaking with you again. And I hope this is going to be a continuous show. Absolutely. <laughs> Look forward <All> right. to it. <laughs> Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Adios. Adios. Bye-bye. <laughs>